Welcome to Australian Hiker, your online hiking resource. We're your hosts, Tim and Jill Savage. This is episode 165 of the Australian Hiker podcast. In last week's episode, we indicated that this week was going to be talking about day hiking, uh, but for various reasons, more to do with uh, the state of my long-distance hike, we decided just to swap uh, some topics around, uh, and this podcast I titled Plan N, which I'll explain in a minute, Um, but Jill just came up for an alternative name for it, which was? Uh, (laughs) This is going to be uh, my trip of I will leave and I will come back, but who knows where I will go. (laughs) I plan to be walking the Australian Alps walking track in mid-November, but between the fires and COVID, this track is now off the menu and is likely to be so for the next few months uh, for everybody else. The term flogging a dead horse comes to mind in my attempt to do this walk, uh, and really, it's it was almost a, a bit of a case of so close and yet so far. As this podcast goes to air, it's one month out and it's time to make a decision. Um, so in this episode, we talk about the planning process for the Australian Alps walking track, what I've decided to do and why, and what my November adventure now looks like. So let's look at where I am at the moment and what the plans are for my big adventure for 2020. We hope you enjoy. Now, as I mentioned, many of you would have been aware that I had actually planned to do the Australian Alps walking track, uh, which uh, runs between Victoria and the ACT for a distance of approximately 680 kilometres. For this hike, um, it does take in the Australian alpine areas and it pretty much takes in the spine of Australia's alpine parks, uh, which means that potentially it is impacted by snow. So unless you want to be doing this as a wintertime hike, uh, and certainly if you've got the experience in snow uh, and backcountry travel, that's, that's certainly doable and people have done it. But as a hike, it tends to be a bit more limited on the time frame. If you are trying to pretty much guarantee you won't have major issues with snow, the walk really needs to be conducted between around about late October uh, through to around about mid to late March. Uh, If you go earlier or later than that time, um, the potential is to be impacted by uh, heavy snowfalls. And, then, and obviously that's going to depend uh, on, on what's happening in each individual year. Trying to do this walk in midsummer, in December, January and early February, uh, you certainly are walking in quite uh, open areas in some cases, particularly through the alpine areas. You're working in uh, some very hot times of the year. Uh, and you are also going through a time of the year where bushfires uh, are potentially a real problem. And that's what happened last year. Uh, certainly the uh, the fires that impacted the Australian Alpine region last year, while they started in uh, northern New South Wales uh, and in other areas, really the, the main impact on the Australian Alps was during the, the middle of the summer. So there is a bit of a, a narrow window to get this walk done. And certainly you can stretch this, but really it's a matter of trying to pick the ideal sort of timing. Hence my decision to to walk starting in, in mid-November. My aim was to complete this walk in 26 days, which would have comfortably finished me off uh, uh, just before mid-December. Now, I had planned this walk from probably about two or three years ago, um, but as we mentioned, both the fires from the 2019-20 summertime uh, and then followed up by COVID had quite a big impact on the ability to do this walk. 
When the fires hit earlier this year, um, I was very much aware that that was going to be probably the major decider for whether this walk could be done or not. Um, and uh, I, I followed almost on a daily basis uh, the park services and eagerly awaited any changes to uh, what was being impacted on this particular track. Uh, I watched from early in the year as large sections of the trail were closed off um, that progressively got worse as the damage was realised. Uh, and then over the last few months, uh, as the, the trail started to open piece by piece, so originally I thought the issue was going to be in the Canberra section, uh, which at one stage, and to a great extent still is, um, it's not possible unless you decide to do it um, against advice and basically against the law to access the ACT section of the Australian Alps walking track. Now I did talk to the chief ranger at, uh, in Tibden Bella Nature Reserve, who's a keen hiker himself, and he said the issue with the ACT area is that there's actually a bridge that was destroyed in one of the access roads, uh, and it's not likely to open up that area for a, from a number of months, uh, you know, potentially late into next year, early into the year after. But there is potential to open up the walking track. Um, uh, because it doesn't rely on you walking down road sections. The issue with that tends to be, though, if all of a sudden you injure yourself in the ACT section, it's how do they get you out and how do they access those areas. So um, while it's expected that the ACT section of this track will open sooner than the road work will, um, it's not going to be something that's going to happen in a hurry. I had actually worked out a workaround for that uh, and that would pretty much rely on me bypassing the ACT section of the walk, coming in through the northern part of ACT through Brindabella National Park uh, and then virtually finishing off at the Namaji Visitor Centre but bypassing the ACT section. Over the last couple of months I've looked at both Kosciuszko National Park and then the Victorian National Parks. And this is what's really come unstuck for me. Um, there is a section of the northern Kosciuszko National Park that still is uh, quite heavily affected by fires, but I did manage to find a workaround for that, uh, which would require me going off trail, uh, but it was an alternate and optional route. The real issues tend to be in Victoria, and in talking to the Victorian Park Service, they said there's large sections, of, particularly of the Alpine National Park, that are closed off, uh, mainly due to dangerous tree damage, uh, and they're not likely to be reopened until uh, December, January at the earliest. So while I could have potentially delayed the walk up until um, uh, another month, that would have put me smack bang in the middle of hiking in the middle of summer uh, and back in the middle of the bushfire season, which, you know, not really a good option to take up. The other thing that had been uh, impacting on this walk was the effects of COVID on, in Victoria. And I'd actually expected the, uh, the relaxation of close-ups or shutdowns uh, and restrictions to have eased faster than they actually had. And had, had there been no wave two, that probably would have been fine. But uh, given that uh, we're now in, uh, I've got a month to go before the walk is due to start, um, we still are in a situation where we don't know when the final restrictions will ease and what that will look like. Um, and, and the issues that we're ultimately coming down to was Jill was going to drop me off and we didn't want to have for her to drive back to Canberra and then have to self-isolate for two weeks. Um, look, I think for me there were just too many unknowns and um, I, I, I've sat patiently watching Tim <laughs> go through this process and every day there was a new thing and I did wonder when he would make this, the decision, whatever the decision was going to be. Um, uh, I think as a bystander it's been a bit frustrating and a bit... Uh, you know, uh, how much more detailed information do we go through to actually f 
face reality on this one. <laughs> I just so this is this is when Tim's uh, whole fixation with planning really gets annoying because uh, I would have called it some time ago. But uh, anyway, you you tell your story, Tim. <laughs> So as I said, we're now a month out uh, and really it was decision time. Uh, While I could have potentially waited another three weeks, I doubt uh, that things are going to change dramatically and and given the the view from the Victorian parks that there's going to be large sections in Victoria closed until December, January at the earliest, uh, it was really time to pull the pin and call it quits. Finally. (laughs) So... Having said all that and having Jill, Jill have a bit of a dig there, <laughs> I, I, I had actually been keeping in mind that this is the situation that I was going to be ending up in. And I do say I here because uh, certainly this is a solo walk for me, uh, although Jill was going to help me out as far as dropping me off and, and helping with food resupply. Um, but I think what it came down to from my perspective was um, I'd started to look at what alternatives and what options existed in relation to long-distance hikes. And COVID really has played a bit of havoc, as have the fires. So, you know, Western Australia is still off limits. Um, South Australia um, is a possibility, uh, but normally the Heysen Trail, which is one I would have dearly loved to do, it tends to close around about mid to late November, um, and that, that wasn't enough time for me to be able to start and finish this walk. Uh, had, had we been two or three months ahead of where we are now, that would have been a possibility. Um, so really that trail is off limits as well. Uh, Queensland, again, there's no really big long distance trails in the, in the, in the, to the extent that I'm looking at here. Um, uh, Northern Territory, we're starting to uh, uh, get... Uh, out of the peak season and into the very hot times of the year or the wet season. Um, So that was also limited. Uh, And that really did leave me with Tasmania, which I'll talk about in a moment, or New South Wales. Now, that narrowed my choice of replacement walks down to two options. One was the Tasmanian Trail, which is a 480-kilometre trail running from basically north to south. Uh, of Tasmania, from Davenport in the in the north, all the way through to uh, Dover in the south. Tasmania has recently uh, announced that they allow people from ACT and other low risk areas in relation to COVID back into Tasmania in the uh, the early part of November. Um, but what they've said in the media is they'll clarify exactly what the details and the rules around that are. And while it probably will mean that everything would be okay and I'd be able to do this walk, there's no guarantee. So again, rather than waiting for another two and a half to three weeks to find out that this walk was potentially on or not, um, um, it's as much as I would have loved to have done that walk, um, it just is something that, again, I need a bit more surety on my planning process. The other thing is that, you know, that, that was an option that came up quite recently and, you know, I know uh, I did have a bit of a, a laugh about your incessant planning. Um, you would not have done anywhere near the kind of planning that you would normally do to do that um, walk in Tasmania S- simply because you're so close to the potential start of it and, um, you know, that would limit the detail with which you would get into um, that planning process. So, you know, that that's an interesting one as well because, um, you know, you kind of start to think, well, you know, if the planning is something that's really important, um, how little planning can you actually do uh, to be comfortable of that distance and, you know, fly to a different state, make sure you've got everything and then get going and then finish. So I was well, I was concerned about that, I have to say. That's a long way of saying that. I mean, distance-wise, it would have been fine because, I mean, you know, I was planning on doing the Australian Alps walking track at 600 and roughly 80 kilometres. So that was, that was my plan and my fitness training. So distance-wise, certainly would have been fine, but logistics would have been a bit harder. 
The Tasmanian Trail is designed to showcase uh, what Tasmania has on offer, uh, mainly through rural areas. It doesn't go through national parks because it is a shared trail uh, and needs to and has been catered for horses. Uh, so you know, horses aren't allowed in national parks, uh, not not at least deliberately anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so it's. You know, resupply would have been a bit harder, um, but I, there would have been stores to buy and purchase along the way, uh, and I could have actually posted ahead a resupply to a, a specific point and picked it up as I went through. But but as Jill said, I mean, normally I would probably spend two to three years working on hikes. Um, I have started to look at Australian Alps walking track for this time next year, uh, I uh, <laughs> good luck with that, Tim. <laughs> I, I know what I want to do in two thousand and twenty-two, uh, and I've you know I've started thinking at least in my mind what that looks like. Um, so you know that's the extent that I tend to go through and plan. So the other option and the other alternative uh, was the Great North Walk, and this is a walking track that was uh, part of the nineteen eighty-eight bicentenary the same time that the uh, National Bicentennial Trail came about. Uh, and this walk takes you from uh, Newcastle to the centre of Sydney, or vice versa, depending on which way you want to head. I'd been looking at this track for uh, on and off over the last couple of years, thinking, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll need to go through and look at it uh, and do it. I had been considering it. Um, it's a substantially shorter walk. And now, having said that, it's still two hundred and sixty kilometres. But you know, it's it's you know under you know compared to six hundred and eighty kilometres, I was planning on doing through remote uh, wilderness area through Australia. It's a very different sort of walk. It's on form trails. It's on roads. It's through some suburbs in Newcastle uh, and coming in through Sydney. Um, there's a trip across the harbour and a ferry. Uh, there's you know there's a bit of a combination of everything so um, you know there's not huge remote uh, wilderness areas involved in this track um, and I'm planning on doing this walk as an 11 uh, maybe 12 day walk uh, I'll see how I go uh, and certainly not covering the distances I typically tend to do on my long distance hikes with the Australian Alps walking track, I was planning on 26 kilometres a day uh, based on the elevation change. Uh, Bibbleman track and things that aren't so mountainous, uh, I'm comfortable with doing 30, 30, 32 kilometres a day. Uh, this one, I think I averaged it out. It's going to be roughly around about the 23, 24 kilometre mark with no huge hills like you'd expect in the Australian Alpine areas. So, you know, the, the, it's not going to be an overly stressful walk as far as um, the, the distance has travelled. I won't have any rest days on this walk uh, like I normally typically would do every sort of seven days. Uh, but what I will do is I'll have some shorter days that might only be sort of 8 to 10 or 15 kilometres thrown in there. So it gives me a chance to have a, a pretty laid back sort of period every so often. What What's sort of interesting for me is that... Um while the Australian Alps walking track is very uh, remote and um, challenging uh, physically and in terms of the terrain, um, but you know it's a bit surprising that I was quite comfortable um, with you doing that. This one, uh, because it is uh, more through populated areas, that actually worries me more than. <laughs> Uh, which, which uh, I don't know, it, it, it's funny in a way uh, that the remoteness for me uh, gives you a little bit more uh, safety from crazy people um, and I, I am a bit concerned about you, you know, heading in it through essentially urban areas around Newcastle and into Sydney um, where there are a lot more people around and... Uh, you know that I know that sounds weird, um, but less less people uh, worries me less. Uh, more people worries me more. And I think I think from my perspective, I mean, the reason I've called this plan in is is pretty much because um, you know this is I have gone through so many iterations and options and alternatives and and variations on the Australian Alps walking track to find try and find a way through and ultimately. 
you know, the, t- the phrase, no use flogging a dead horse, uh, comes into into play here. Uh, really... You flogged that horse, man. I, I did, think. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, potentially I could have ended up doing it, but it would have been you know, a very small percentage on, on the trail tread, and it would have been, yes, it would have been... Uh, I could have found my way from Victoria through to Canberra, but it wouldn't have, been, have represented the trail or, or a, a reasonable part of the trail. So I'd rather wait and do it and have the experience when things are looking a bit better. Now, one thing I must say here is um, it, it's interesting. I'm used to looking at trails like the Bibbleman, like the Heisen Trail, like Lara Pinta, uh, like the Overland Track, uh, where... The details provided by typically it's the park services or the organisation that runs the tracks are, are really very very detailed, and certainly there is a great North Walk uh, uh, website. Uh, it is very good for planning. There's no doubt about that. But it does actually refer you to New South Wales Forestry and the New South Wales Park Services to identify areas that are closed or diverted. Uh, and there is there is at least one diversion area that I'm aware of, and I'm pretty sure it is only the one diversion area. Had I been looking at doing the walk today, it wouldn't be possible. There are a couple of areas closed off in some of the parks as they're doing burn-offs, uh, and they will the burn-offs actually finish uh, basically in the next week. Uh, so for me, starting the walk in 30 days' time, uh, I think will be fine. Now, having said that, I... I'm aware I need to keep track of what's going on. Uh, I need to keep an eye on what's happening with the fires and uh, potentially if we end up with fires back again, uh, this could derail this walk as well. So it's it's something that um, while I am wanting to do this walk, um, I will keep a very, very close eye on to it in the next few weeks. So I need to start thinking about a just-in-case option if that is the case, so and I suppose that's where the uh, the Tasmanian walk or the Tasmanian trail comes into a just in case option. Uh, so I will will still be going through and planning that walk just in case, but with the expectation that my plan is to do the Great North Walk. Yeah, which you know, I, I guess that's um, disappointing. Um, uh, but given twenty twenty is the the year 2020 years, a bit of disappointment is better than the alternative, um, you know, as long as we're still safe and happy and well, um, you know, you, you just have to shrug some of this stuff off. And I, I know that's getting a little bit hard and there's some people who are doing it quite tough and, and uh, you, you know, people are uh, quite quite severely affected in the lockdown areas around Melbourne in particular. Um, But, you know, uh, (laughs) it it, it is hiking. It is supposed to be fun. And um, if if it's not possible and if it's not going to be fun, then, hey, you know, read about it, watch a movie. (laughs) Okay, so as far as the Australian Hiker website is concerned, Pretty much we have drawn a line under the Australian Alps walking track. So the final post uh, has gone up. uh, On journeys. On journeys, uh, which will be reinstigated again hopefully next year as I start trying to do the Australian Alps walking track in 12 months' time. We've generated a new Great North Walk section in our journeys, uh, 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 in the journeys. So the first post for the Great North Walk will be up on the evening of the 14th of October. Um, So if you want to follow along and see how I go with this track, (laughs) uh, this is where the information and news will be. Fingers crossed he'll actually get to start. (laughs) That will be an achievement. And given that given that we're now thirty days out, the posts will be much more regular. So normally, normally I go we, uh, I go fortnightly up until about a month out, shift over to weekly, uh, and then as I'm leading into the last seven days, becomes daily. I think given the changes and the impacts, which what which, what's going on, uh, certainly two weeks out, I'll be going to daily and updating you with what's going on then. All right, so 
as we said, this podcast was really just to update you on, <laughs> on what my long distance hike was going to be this year uh, and what that's now looking like. Uh, and as I said, hopefully come 14th of uh, November, uh, you'll see me setting off from Newcastle uh, and I am heading south uh, as per my usual uh, habit. Of I walking like, home. I like walking home. Uh, and one thing I will mention just here, I had actually planned on uh, getting to Sydney, getting the train to Katoomba and walking from Katoomba to Mittagong. There is a bushwalk that does that, but that air, that walk, uh, at least a, a, a chunk of it is closed at a certain point <laughs> because of the fires. So that walk's not actually able to be done. So that was about 130 kilometres, uh, which I was planning on adding on uh, just to give me keep me busy for a, another week on top of that. So this um, this is all about Tim's desperation uh, to get out and uh, walk for a long time and um, not not to have a shower or get clean um, for at least two weeks. So you know that's c- kind of the thing that's driving you, isn't it? It is, but I think I've got at least one night that I'll actually be in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, admittedly, it is the first night, so that's probably not going to help me too much. But yeah, it's uh, I will be camping for the majority of times. I'll be staying in caravan parks. I'll be staying in campsites. Uh, so we'll have a bit more access to amenities, uh, at least on part of the walk. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. That's all for me. Um, if you want any more information on uh, the this walk, have a look at the journeys posts on our Australian Hiker website uh, and follow along over the next few weeks as we update you and keep you um, uh, informed about how this new version of my 2020 trip is going. That's all for me. Bye for now. And bye from me.